Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The barriers to achieving progress in the treatment of glioblastoma are several. Firstly, the brain is a difficult organ in terms of managing side effects of therapies. And so, for example, something as simple as doing an operation, which in other organs in the body would be a relatively simple task, is extremely complicated in the brain. You can't take out a large portion of most of the brain as you would want to do for treatment of a malignant brain tumor such as a glioblastoma because that would produce unacceptable damage to the patient. In addition, even a large operation such as taking out perhaps an entire hemisphere of a patient with a glioblastoma because of the infiltrative nature of these tumors would actually not accomplish much the tumor would likely occur again on the other side of the brain, opposite the side that was removed in its entirety. So one of the major challenges for treatment of glioblastoma has been the inability to do a very big operation in most situations. An additional challenge to treating patients with this disease is the fact that the therapies that are given are actually screened out for the most part by the brain. The brain is unique in its capacity to screen out what it perceives as toxins. And this ability is due to its uh, having what's called the blood-brain barrier. And the blood-brain barrier is essentially a mechanism for screening out toxins, which the brain correctly perceives things such as chemotherapy drugs as being. So it's doing what it really should be doing in terms of protecting the brain. However, in doing that, it develops uh, mechanisms for keeping out treatments that you would want to get in. Because of that, treatments like chemotherapy have to be given in very, very high doses. Again, unacceptable in terms of toxicity to the patient in order to get enough into the brain to affect change in a tumor that's occurring in the brain. In addition, radiation therapy, uh, which is also a very useful technique for many types of cancer, is challenging in glioblastoma because, again, of the toxicity that may be to not tolerated by a patient who's getting treated with radiation. So you may be able to give a very high dose of radiation to an organ in the body, in the brain. This may produce uh, damage to the normal brain structures, uh, inflammation and swelling around the area that was radiated, and that in turn can cause patients to have cognitive or other problems that are unacceptable in terms of toxicity. I've been in the field of neurosurgical oncology for about 25 years now, and glioblastoma is the challenge that brought me into the field of neurosurgery in the first place. It's been a very tough nut to crack in that it is you know, an incredibly aggressive weed that grows in the brain. Um, in the 25 years I've been working on this, there have been very few advances over, the, over that period of time. Um, when I first started as a medical student and resident, average survival was about nine months, maybe 10 months after diagnosis and patients were treated with surgical resection, radiation, and often uh, nitrosourea like CCNU or BCNU. Over time, some new therapies have come out, but we've been through many, many negative clinical trials with glioblastoma. The biggest advance really occurred about a decade ago when Roger Stoop uh, presented what is now known as the Stoop Protocol, which combined the oral alkylating agent temozolomide, or temidar, um, along with radiation therapy. Temozolomide had been out for a few years and traditionally had been delivered after six weeks of radiation, uh, but Dr. Stoop uh, published a New England Journal of Medicine article uh, about a decade ago that adding the two together increased the overall survival from about 12 months to about 14.2 months. That was the biggest advance we had had in the last 25 years in glioblastoma therapy. Shortly thereafter, um, bevacizumab, the anti-angiogenesis drug, uh, was introduced, and that was FDA approved, um, usually used for recurrent glioblastoma, and did seem to extend the life of a few patients and acted somewhat like a super steroid in reducing the amount of swelling from these uh, very aggressive tumors. But really, the biggest advance we've had in the last uh, 
the last decade since the Stroop Protocol has been the trial called the EF14 trial that just came out, um, which showed that an unusual alternating electrical field run by a company called Novacure with a device now known as Optune increased that survival from about 14 uh, months up to about 17 months after the initiation of therapy. Um, so this uh, result was just published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in December of 2015, uh, and I think is one of the biggest recent advances. Um, we've got a number of new items coming down the pike and a lot of interesting new data coming along about immune modulatory therapies that include some vaccines, some peptide, you know, some cell vaccines, some peptide vaccines, some immune checkpoint modulators like PD-1 inhibitors, and then we're seeing that a lot of the viral therapy and gene therapy that has been worked on for the last several decades may be working through an immune mechanism as well. So there's a lot of promise in the field right now in a field that had been really quite stagnant in the first 15 to 20 years uh, that I had been involved with it.